What's happening, what's happening, what's happening? Of course you know it's your boy B-Hot Radio Shout in. Stepping in the building, I got a new artist that's tearing up the streets as we speak. Roddy Rax, what's good with it, boss? Yes, God, yes, God. How you feeling? I'm feeling good, Roddy, but I had a chance to marinate on some of this music, man. Yeah. And you over here going in and this thing, and obviously it's never enough. I mean, talk yeah. to me about that banger right there going crazy, man. Never enough. That's, that's, the, that's the soul of the streets just speaking for real. It, it sound good, but if you listen to the lyrics, listen to what I'm really saying, like, I'm really telling the story. Like, it, the whole, the song is really about, like, when I went to jail for real, I went to jail and what I was going through and what I was going to do when I came home. And it's crazy that that's the song that got me on because it's like, it's a story behind the song. You feel me? Break down that story though, Roddy. I mean, being locked down and having dreams and goals at the same time, but finding yourself in that predicament and not knowing what the hell is going to come of it. Yeah, that's exactly what I went in there and I was thinking like when I first got in there, first started, like when I was in jail, I was in jail for like two weeks and I was like, man, I'm not rapping. I'm not worried about rapping. Everybody telling me like, you need to rap, keep writing, keep writing, keep writing. And I wouldn't. I ain't never used to write my songs, so I sat back and I wrote that song for mm -hmm. real, and just like keeping my mind not off of being in jail and just like what's going on outside and who I really am. You feel me? Like yeah. I got time to sit back and think about like how big I really can be. You feel me? Exactly. Instead of thinking of it like, man, I'm in jail. This shit going the wrong way. Fuck that rap shit. All that. Come on. When you find yourself shooting videos for the music at the same time, man, what is that like when you're starting to realize them dreams and it's starting to turn into a movie at the same time? Yeah, that's what I like about it most, though, shooting the videos for real. Like, yeah. I like shooting the videos. Now I like doing shows, and then, like, I just like making the songs for real. Yeah. I don't be really with all the fame stuff, all the extra stuff that come with it, you feel me? Yeah. When it comes to shooting them videos, though, you had to hit them folks with the extreme bike version, man. Talk to me about that bike life. What you know about that bike life, Roddy? Yeah, that's that Baltimore culture yeah. right there. That's Baltimore right there. That's it. When you come up in Baltimore, that's all you're going to see from by the time you three years old. You're going to see bikes come past you. I'm like, man, shit, when I grow up, I want to get on a bike. Exactly. You know I mean? Every kid in Baltimore, that's their dream, ride bikes. My God. Talk about coming up in Baltimore with it, though, man. What was that like for you? Shit, like... Life like a movie for real. You just yeah. it's it's fun, it's turned up, but at the same time, you know how fast stuff can happen and stuff can go wrong, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So it's just like I just use all that grind and all that pain. I mean all that grit and all that pain just to fill me up with the energy to just do what I do, you feel me? Exactly. Instead of just looking at it the wrong way, because it's like, shit, you can get stuck in that old city, you feel me? Come on. Come yeah, on. you can get stuck or my other people like if they was in my position, they'd be focused on like, Oh yeah, I got fame and I got money, you feel me? I'ma just Try to shit on everybody in the city. Nah, I show niggas there's a positive way to do it. And I just show niggas like, man, it ain't just about that. You feel me? It's bigger than just being in this city. You feel me? It's millions to get. You feel me? Exactly. When was it that you found your passion for the music and got started with it, though? Like, I always been in the music. But uh -huh. it's like when I got in high school, it was like I really wasn't even paying attention to school. I was paying attention more to music and would go on the streets. You feel me? So I sit in school all day. And just listen to music. Like I know a, a whole mixtape will last me a whole a whole class, you feel me? Yeah. I listen to Purple Rain Future. Yeah. A whole class. Won't even pay attention to class, you feel me? <laughs> so then after that, I had made like one little song for real. I made the song, everybody in my hood was going crazy, you feel me? Everybody like you gotta keep going. So then my homeboy had died that was mm -hmm. telling me like, yo, you gotta keep rapping. I'm like, man, I really got to do it because he told me to keep going, you feel me? So yeah. everybody already saw that I was going to be where I'm at now. Exactly. But at first, I ain't see it. I was just more into the music. Like, these niggas rapping my life. I can do the same thing. So I was exactly. making it for myself. So then I just, like, I fell in love with the studio. I was in the studio for six months straight. I was recording myself. My first tape, I recorded my whole self. Like, I did that myself, <laughs> you feel me? And that's what made me get better. What was it that gave you that, you know tenaciousness to stay down with it during that time? Because, I mean, did you feel like music was going to be your way? No, I didn't feel like music was going to be my... I didn't even see it, like, to be this big at first. It was just like I was going through so much. Music was keeping my mind off what mm. I had going on, you feel me? My yeah. old boy just died. I'm in, like, the 12th grade, you feel me? I, yeah. I'm walking past the graveyard to, like, his graveyard right next to my school, you feel me? So... I'm in school. I look across the street. I see my man grave. You feel me? I was with him when he died and all that. So it's like that shit was fucking me up. So I just stayed in the studio all day, every day, all day, every day. I wasn't hustling or none of that shit. Just in the studio, six month street, whole winter. 
being that close to your partner when he passed, though, man, how did that impact you having to, you know, witness that firsthand? Man, that shit, that shit fucked me up because it's like that's somebody you really love. You feel me? So it's like I couldn't even go to the. I went to the funeral, but I couldn't see my man in cash because I'm like, man, I was with him. Like, yeah, was, when he died, he was on me. You feel me? Yeah. So it's like. That shit fucked me up bad. And then everybody was like, people from my own neighborhood was looking at it like, damn, y'all let him die. Like, what the fuck could we really do? Like, yeah. Feel me? People in that hood was like, damn, y'all let him die. It was nothing really much we can do, you feel me? Yeah. So it's like, I just use all that to just go ahead and grind, you feel me? What advice do you got for other young men coming up in them same circumstances, man? Shit. Just stay focused. Don't let none of that trick you. Don't let none of that trick you out your spot. You feel yeah. me? Just know your worth and just know where you going at. Don't let none of that. Just stay, stay. Just keep grinding and just don't pay attention to nothing else that's going on. Exactly. What was that tipping point that allowed you to go and be able to get that deal? Um, When I dropped Never Enough. When I, once I dropped Never Enough, like the deal was already on the table for mm. real. So I had stopped hustling and just was like, I'm gonna just focus on the music because yeah. it's like I'm ready to get signed. Niggas don't never get signed. Like this shit, one lifetime chance. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. Especially coming from where I'm coming from. So it's like basically my homeboy Pirates gave me the alley hoop. Mm. People from Def Jam seeing me on his Instagram was fucking with me. So like I shot out to LA and met up with him in person. They fucked with me and they seen the vision that I seen. What was going through your mind though? Because I mean, you got record labels and then you got Def Jam. Yeah, how that make yeah. you feel? It's still, it's still like I still come to myself like, damn, I really signed on Def Jam. But yeah, most of the time I really don't feel it yet because I was already working like this already. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna just probably feel it when I get them crazy checks. What is it like having that label structure behind the music though? Because like you said, you recording yourself at first, yeah. getting busy, then now you got a budget behind yeah. what's going on. It's so it's way easier because I was coming out of pocket, like I was hustling to take care of my music. Like yeah, I was spending like six thousand dollars a month just on studio time. My God, you spending four thousand on every outfit you wearing. <laughs> then you spend a thousand dollars to shoot the video. You feel me? Yeah. So I was coming out of my pocket. People weren't noticing. I was spending more money on rap than just. Regular living, you feel exactly. me? Exactly. So it's like people don't know that, and people ask you for shit out of your. <laughs> you feel me? when you put your all in this. I done went broke for this plenty of times. Yep. Talk to me about the investing into your craft that you had to do too, because a lot of folks think that they could just go in the studio and jam, and it's gonna be all right. What was it like when you realized you had to put the money where your mouth is? <sighs> That's what I knew I had to do the whole time. Like when I, when I first started rapping, I was hustling, but I was barely getting over. Yeah, you feel me? So. I know it's like, man, I know I got the talent, yeah. but the money going to bring the attention, you feel me? I, the money, I got to pay for these studio sessions, I got to pay for these videos. I don't really like asking nobody. I'd rather do it myself. If I don't got, if I ask somebody, I won't even let it happen, you feel That's me? Right. If I ask somebody, you'll pay for this video for me, I just wait it out, you feel me? Yes, sir. Uh, coming up in Baltimore with it, though, man, what was that like for you, man? And what is that culture like for those that don't know? Man, I love Baltimore. Like, I love it. But it's like, now I look at it like, I'm not a regular person. I can't just do what I used to do. Like, I'm yeah. signed on a label and all that. Like, I got big blessings and big opportunities in front of me. I can't just chill on the block. Like, I was just in the hood for like three weeks straight. You feel yeah. me? Just like how I regular used to be in the hood. Then I came to my session. <laughs> well, I came to my senses when I got a K. Like, man, ain't nothing going to go on, but I'm going to kill somebody. I'm going to yeah. get killed. I'm going to go to jail. Exactly. I am not touching that city no more unless it's about some money. Talk to me about folks saying rap being a dangerous profession, man. Do you feel like it's really dangerous? Most dangerous. Talk to me. Because, like, we got shit like this. Change the shit. Yeah. People look at it like you just got, you just blowing money. You feel me? Yeah. But it's, we just actually know what we doing. Like, this this chain, this is like an investment. This is like marketing for real. Like, yeah. you feel me? This going to get their attention. Exactly. And people just look at it like, man, you got this. And then a lot of people be looking at it like, like, they use love for money, you feel me? They gonna say, yeah, you love me, so shit, help me pay this bill, help me do this, help me, th yeah, you love me, you feel me? I watched you get this, I watched you come up, yeah, yeah. you watched me come up, You could, that mean you could do the same thing that I did, you come feel on, me? Come on, come on. It's just, and most of the time, like, other than that, like, around the people that's close to you, it be like, niggas be mad about them bitches. If you get they bitch attention, they gonna be mad. Come on. You feel me? Talk to me about that because, you know, they say 90% of all beef really stems from dealing with from these females. women. Talk yeah. to me. Yeah, and then niggas be salt dropping. Niggas are um, 
talk bad about another nigga to a female when females talk and run their mouth, you feel me? So it's like, I don't really, I keep it casual with them females. I don't really talk about nothing. How is it for you trying to be a player out here and enjoy yourself, and then you got to watch your back, you got to keep yourself yeah. from beefing with these folks, and then you yeah. got to make sure these women don't get y'all, you know, messed up yeah, out here? You, 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 you spending money on these women, and you, <laughs> you got to know who really for you. Like, I got one girl, like, I, only, I got a girlfriend for real. Yeah. So I don't really even do her wrong, because I know that only come once, you mm -hmm. feel me, where a girl really for you, you yeah. feel me? So it's like, I just stay... I just stay away from the mix, stay out of people's way, and just stay in the studio. Like, long as I'm in the studio, I'm going to have a good day. If I'm out in public and people asking me for stuff and people trying to get over on me day to day, like, yeah. that, that, that don't, my, that don't, my energy be off, you feel me? Talk to me about being able to travel, though, man, because like you said, you find yourself out there in Cali, back and forth to Baltimore and stuff like that. What is it like seeing these new places and it's, these new vibes? It, 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 it's lit. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. Keep going, because it's like I can go from... I can go from being in the hood, just like who I really am. Like that shit, that shit, being in the hood, that shit keep my heart pumping. That's yeah. that's me. You feel me? Feel regular. Mm -hmm. I I still walk through my hood. Like I get out, park the car, and just walk through the blocks and just you feel me, kick mm -hmm. it. But then I go back to Cali and hop in a Rolls Royce or some shit. Come on. And I be like, damn, I just went from <laughs> a regular life to living my dream. You feel me? That yeah. fast. What is it like living your dream though, Ratty? Because so many people don't get that opportunity, bro. It just keep you dreaming. You feel yeah. me? Like, man, shit, if I'm already doing this, shit, I got to do this by this time. You feel me? Yes, just, I just set goals for myself. Like, man, shit, I got to buy my mother a house just so I can say I bought my mother a house. Exactly. When you think about the Rolls Royce is coming out, I mean, videos like Heads Up, you bringing the bikes out, yeah. I mean, y'all over the place having the time of your life. What is it like? Being able to put that bike life on Front Street and stuff like that and enjoy yourself. Yeah, cause And how deep are you in that motocross too, man? I, I ain't really deep into the motocross, I'm deep into like the street bike life. You okay, feel me? okay. But it's like, that shit, that shit, it's like bringing me into the music, you feel me? All that come together and it's all entertainment. Like, mm -hmm. I know what, I'm gonna get fans just from me riding bikes, you feel me? They ain't even got like the music, they just gonna like the bikes. Yeah. Or they just might like my style, you feel me? Or they just gonna like the music. Exactly. And some people, like the people from my city, they know my story, so it's like bigger than them. Like, damn, this nigga really, I watched him <laughs> come up from nothing, I went to school with him. Yeah. I done been in jail with him. Yeah. I done, niggas, niggas in jail, they seen me write them songs. Like, they, I've been, I done been in the bunk, 10 niggas in there. Yo, this is a song I just wrote for real, rapping to them. And now they hear it on the radio, they like, you feel me? <laughs> exactly. I'm just be thinking like, how that make them feel? Like they just watched me do this. Exactly. Being able to be an inspiration to other folks, man. What has that been like for you too, man? Just being a leader in the community and folks having to be able to look up to you and say, okay, yeah. if you can do it, I can do it too. That's the biggest part about it to me. It ain't even really about the money, cause the money, it come and go. So I'd rather just, Cause I done had no money and I had money before, so money don't make me really happy for it. It's just yeah. what I can do for other people that make me happy, you feel me? Yeah, what was that tipping point though when you realized that you was gonna have to leave them streets alone and it was gonna be rap from all from that point forward? When I dropped Never Enough, mm -hmm. and it was like, it was like I wasn't doing bad in the streets, but it was like the more chances that I take, I might get locked up or something. Like, I could I could be, I had way more money if I was still in the streets, but it'd be like, I be taking too many chances. So I had to really sit back for months and just go from my house to the studio. You know, I'm on probation and all that, so I gotta go from my house to the studio, back home, nothing extra, you feel me? What is that like being on probation, trying to have a career at the same time? Uh, it was scary, <laughs> but it's almost over now, but okay. you feel me? It was scary, because it was like, man, shit. I'm in Baltimore City, you feel me? Yeah. I'm a star, I gotta get money. It's like, it's so, it was tricky, but yeah. it, it was just simple. Like, man, I made it in my mind. Like, shit, as long as I go from my house to the studio, God got me. Like, exactly. anything other than that, I'm doing extra, you feel me? When you got that deal with Def Jam and you realized that it was going down, was it everything that you thought it would be or a little bit more crazier? It was it was crazier, because it was crazy the people reaction. Like, a lot of people was surprised like and a lot of people wasn't surprised because they know like man that was only set up for me to get signed yeah it was like that shit was crazy because i just didn't like how everybody started calling my phone <laughs> a whole lot of people i don't even know how y'all got my number everybody calling me this and that everybody calling me with business yo i think you should do this i think bro i've been getting money bro don't call me and tell me what you think i should invest in <laughs> 
They be crazy. Talk to me about that fame because when that phone starts ringing and everybody needs you, it used to be, I hey, do. man, I want to talk to you, but now I need you. What is that like dealing with that? Listen, I don't even, I, don't, I ain't answer the phone so much that people don't even call me no more, but some days, <laughs> some days I sit back like, all right, this is a day, the day I want to answer the phone, like, shit, whatever call me and whatever approach me, I'm going to just address it, you feel me? Yeah. So it's like, I be playing mind games with them instead of them playing mind games with me because they call me and ask me for something. I just know, like, bruh, you wouldn't do the same thing for me if you was in my position, you feel me? Yeah. Like, I done been broken in your face. I done slept on floors. I done slept on air beds. I done did everything. I done worked jobs. I done walked to work, all type of shit yeah, to get yeah. here. Don't, don't forget that, you feel me? I just don't like when people forget who I am and just think about what I got, you feel mm. me? Yeah. What is that like, though, man, when people know you, but now they don't know you, yeah, and then they treat you like an object instead of a person? Yeah, in it's thing. tricky. It's tricky. That's why I stay around people that's really, like, for me instead of, like, being around me for what I got going on. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. That's what I always keep everybody on. Like, like me and my homeboys, like, we sit back and we, like, learn, learn what's going on in the world all day, every day. Like, we just be like... Watching other people, how other people react. We sit back and have conversations like how we can switch up, how we move every day, all day. You feel me? We just be working on ourselves. Create a process, though, Roddy. When you get in that studio and it's time for you to go all the way up in there, man. I mean, what are the vibes? Man, I just go in there, put the headphones on, and and just don't stop until the song done. You feel me? Yeah. Just go in there and don't stop till the song done. Now, when it comes to entering this rap game, what are the messages? What is the flavor that you're trying to bring in here that's going to separate you from everybody else that folks need to be aware of? Man, I did the impossible. That's that, that's what I wanted them to know. Like, ain't nobody my age. I done seen grown men, like, they get all the money in the world, but ain't nobody make it out of the streets. Mm. I made it out of the streets, you feel me? Yeah. And I done went through everything a street nigga can go through. You feel me? And I'm, I taught myself. I ain't had nobody tell me, like, bro, you know, I ain't had nobody tell me, like, you ain't supposed to be doing this, you ain't supposed to be doing that. I, I taught myself I ain't supposed to do that. You feel me? I taught myself how to move. We taught ourselves how to get money. Exactly. We ain't had no big homie, none of that. You feel me? So we built all this up by ourselves. Talk to me about maneuvering in the game without a playbook, though, man. What is that like, just trying to have to feel your way through this thing? It's just watching, like, Watching the other artists you, you watch come up, you feel me? I done watch a lot of people come up. Like, I remember Lil Baby first started rapping. Yeah. I hit him for a feature. He wanted 1500 Yeah. Now, this nigga getting 200000 a feature. You feel <laughs> yeah, me? Yeah, I just know how fast it can happen. Yeah. So, I just stay stay silent and just stay out of the mix and stay, with, stay on the grind. When it comes to the music, though, man, what is it that you love the most about it all? The impact, for real. Mm. Seeing the people reaction, you feel me? It's like, I like seeing my homeboys react to it first because it's yeah. like, they know how real this is. Like, exactly. they, they, you feel me? They feel it. Like, they feel it. You feel me? What are the places that you done found yourself in that rap has taken you so far that you couldn't believe you were there? Sure. I don't know. It's just it's stuff be happening so fast. I done been in a lot of places. I'm like, damn, I'm here. You feel yeah. me? I was, um, I was in the studio with 808 Mafia and, and Polo G one day. Yeah. I've been in the studio with like Dej Loaf before, yeah. Hit Maker. Like I'd have been in a video at a video shoot with Quavo, all that type of shit. Like, damn, mm-hmm. this shit crazy. I remember listening to their music, you feel me? And and the people been recognizing me, like Meek Mill, all them type people, like people just like, bro, I see you coming up. And yeah. I feel like for me, I feel like my fan base ain't biggest I know it's gonna be. Yeah. But it's like people recognizing my talent more than the fan base, you feel me? What is it like networking with other artists in the game, man, and having to meet these folks face to face after you was jamming to their music beforehand? Man, it's lit. It's lit. I ain't gonna lie. Like, it's still a start for me. Yeah. But I feel like I'm I know I'm gonna take it over. I ain't really trying to be cocky, but like yeah. I already know what I'm worth, you feel me? Exactly. Like I'm way bigger than what they know I am. So, how much pressure do you feel then to perform? Because if you already got this vision and you're trying to get there, man, I mean, what are you doing to take the necessary steps to get you to where you see yourself being? Shit. Networking, trying to use everything as a positive, and just like, man, I know, like, God be putting me all in the right spot. So, if I see, like, if I see, like, a rap, I run into him, 
in the elevator. If I feel like it's the right time, I'm gonna tell them like, yo, this this me. I'm introduce myself. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But I ain't one of them niggas that's just going run into a nigga in the club and be like, yo, check my music out. <laughs> I ain't. I know because I'm a rapper. I wouldn't even like for a nigga to do that. So I wait for it's the perfect time. You feel me? Yeah. When it comes to the music, what are the songs that get the party started every time, though, Roddy? Oh, this song I got called Addict. Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's we, Them young niggas balling, they gonna think we got checks. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Okay, then. Okay, then. That's a, that's a statement. I told them, them young niggas balling, they gonna think we got a check. <sighs> they was thinking we had a check the whole time. It was street money. Like, yeah. we coming out... To, we, we going to shows... Young niggas, hundred thousand on us, like cash. We we just might come to this come to the show in a hundred cash in a book bag. You feel me? I mean, y'all boys was rocking and rolling like that though, yeah, right? But I'm talking about we young though, like twenty four. I'm twenty four. I'm the oldest nigga like in my crew for real, basically. Yeah. Talking about my little brother, he twenty. He doing a you the came here, you the thought he was the rapper. He got the same jewelry I got. You feel me? <laughs> exactly. So now, lastly, what advice do you got for that next guy? Just like you coming out of Baltimore, trying to find a way out of there. What does he need to know, and what does he need to be doing out here? Just man? stay sharp and block out the world. You feel me? If you if you worry about what everybody else doing, that shit gonna throw you off your game. If you got a lot of people opinion, that shit gonna throw you off your game. Cause you gotta look at it. People think they know what's best for you, when they don't even know what's best for themselves. You mm-hmm. feel me? So you can't listen to them. Now I gotta go one more place with you before I let you up out of here, man. Because your story is similar to a lot of folks when you talk about, you know, the experience of jail and partners dying, man. But, I mean, that stuff is kind of traumatic for young men. Yeah. How do you overcome that shit? It's like you done felt so much, you don't even feel nothing no more. You feel me? Yeah. So it's like, it's it's still a vivid memory. Like, damn, my homeboy died. But it's like, even on my best days, sometimes it might come to me. On my best days, it come to me like, damn, yo. This shit fucked up. Like, I lost all these people, but that shit taught me a lesson. That shit made me move sharp, you feel me? This is where to get where I'm at. And that was like, shit, he put that impact on me. Now I got to put my impact on the world, you feel me, for mm-hmm. him, you feel me? Do you feel like you became numb to the pain and the struggle yeah, in the and hood? That shit, that shit fucked me up at the same time because it's like, you don't even know when to be happy now, you feel mm-hmm. me? So it's like, you just keep going, keep grinding. Because it's like, I don't know what could make me happy. I, I'm thinking... Shit, I buy a Lambo. That shit might make me happy. You feel me? I feel. But I didn't bought, I didn't bought jewelry. I thought that shit was gonna make me happy. This shit just once you, you get it, it's old now. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. But I just feel like once I buy my mother house and just, just buy everybody. Just keep buying shit for people. So now I gotta ask you this question as well, man. What is it that you think continues to keep? young black men dying in the hood and is there anything that we can do to try to prevent that stuff everybody going through something everybody going through their own pain so when they everybody going through their own pain at home so when they come outside they already got something against somebody you feel me a nigga might be your homeboy every day but you might be on the block with him and you might got something for a better number than him Mm. and he just jealous because he trying to make that extra 15 dollars and 20 dollars you feel me yeah and it it might throw him off for the day he might not even be your homeboy for the day because you didn't did something that he wanted to do you feel me yeah yeah it's just like that but it's like man you just gotta stay away from people (laughs) the more people you're around the more problems you're gonna have yeah yeah now i feel that lastly Roddy, how can these folks contact you and is there anything you want to let these people know Shit, at Roddy Rax, R-O-D-D-Y-R-A-C-K-Z-Z on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all that. But, like, man, I just want them to know, like, this this a movie more than a story, you feel me? Like, yes, I call myself the realest Richard Young, and you feel me? Ooh, that's all like, right. You feel me? Yeah. I'm the realest person, like, I'm the realest young nigga come out of, like, anywhere, you feel me? And, and get the money, and the money don't, I show them that. I'm bigger than the money and all that shit. I'm bigger than all this, you feel me? Like, what I learned from the streets, that's what mean most to me, you feel me? Yeah. That's what's going to get me far. What is the main lesson that you take from the streets that you're applying every day in this rap game, man? Niggas ain't your homeboys. Niggas ain't your homies. Business is business. Yeah. Business is business. That's it. Yeah. Business is business. I can you feel dig me? that. I can dig that. Right. If, 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 if they don't profit them, they ain't going to be happy. Facts. Big old facts. Yeah. Be high radio, shouty. Roddy Rex, we up out of this thing. Holla at y'all in a minute, man. We go.